Good morning guys, welcome to my study day vlog. So I wanted to vlog a day to show you guys what a big day of study looks like for me around the time of exams. So I start the day by just doing my usual morning routine. So just washing my face, doing some of my rehab exercises and push-ups. I was doing the um, May push-up challenge for mental health awareness at this time. And then I also just have daily rehab exercises that I always just have in my routine. They're kind of just prehab exercises now that I do to stop being injured. So I've been studying in the kitchen because it's winter now and my study space is so cold and we have a heater in the kitchen. However, I really recommend having a really nice study space and set up because that's a really big tip I have to studying well and just like having a nice kind of sanctuary where you can do your study in peace in. My first tip of this day is having a to-do list or a planner. So that's what the first thing I do every morning is I'll check my planner, which I've written out the night before and cross off what I have done already and then just go through what I have to do for that day and maybe tweak it, add some things. So what I have here is a overall study planner that I write for the weeks before an exam, just what I need to get done in the weeks leading up so that by the time I get to an exam, I'm prepared and I've done everything, covered all my content. These are just some examples of what I'll write out for each day. So this one's kind of more of a weekly one. When it gets towards the week of an exam, I'll write what I need to do each day so that by the end of the week or just when I get to the exam that I finish studying all the content. Another tip I kind of have is setting myself a goal of how many hours of study I want to get done for that day and recording it on my watch. I'll go into that a little bit later in the video. So I organize my notes by week and I'll write them out in each week. So I have my printed off notes and then I'll just write those out, draw diagrams and study those materials. And I'll go into how I like to effectively learn this throughout this video. But you might be wondering why the very first thing I've done when I wake up is just straight away get into studying. And that brings me to my next tip, which is to break up your chunks of studying throughout the day. So I like to break it up with productive things like training or going for a walk or doing something I have to do, like checking emails, having a lunch or breakfast break. So that's why I start studying first thing in the morning, because then I can break up my first chunk of study with a break to have breakfast. But obviously, if you wake up super hungry, just have breakfast when you're hungry, listen to your body. But that's what I like to do at the moment. So, yeah. So I was going through a bit of a smoothie phase the last few weeks, so I was having a nice thick smoothie because that's how I like my smoothies, nice and thick. I just chopped it with some chia seeds, oats and kiwi fruit. And yeah, I usually have oatmeal. If you watch my videos, you would know, but I do like to swap it up sometimes and I do go through phases. Also, I do eat kiwi fruit skin. I also always have a tea in the morning and I was getting the biggest brain freezes that I had to like skull half of my tea every time I had a sip of my smoothie but it was worth it.
So while I have breakfast, I just do a bunch of productive stuff like checking my emails, you know, checking comments, checking what I have to do throughout the week, throughout the day, tweaking it and just planning my life in general. Good morning guys I thought I would vlog today to share a kind of like a study with me day I've been getting a lot of requests to do this kind of thing and I wanted to vlog today and to share a few tips on how to do a solid day of studying just some tips that I use to study effectively new things that I'm trying so I'm trying to put together eight hours of study today and I'm running behind schedule because I've been filming and like my rehab exercises took longer than I had planned for but I'm using my old HSE study method. It's not really a method um, thing where I use my stopwatch and every time I have a break from studying, whether that be like making breakfast or brushing my teeth, which I need to go and do, I will pause my watch. And basically by the end of the day, I want that to get to eight hours. This is, ugh, that was just something in the HSE. I was like obsessed with getting that number to 10. I was like, if I do 10 hours a day, then I know I'm like grinding so hard and then I have to get a good HSE. <laughs> but like, obviously I don't normally do this anymore. I just thought for this video to make sure I actually get eight hours in, I would try this technique again. Because even if you sit down at your desk for three hours to study, it might not add up to three hours of study. It might be like two and a half hours. So that's why I do that timing thing. It's really intense and I hate it now. But back in the day, I was like in such a stress mindset. Not that I'm not anymore, but whatever. So at the moment, I'm studying for this semester's final exams, like the end of semester exams. For uni, the subjects I have exams for are neuroscience, biochemistry and exercise physiology, and biomechanics. <laughs> so because of the current situations and circumstances, all our exams are online. I just want to add, this doesn't mean they are open book. They are actually proctored with someone FaceTiming us and having control over our computer at the same time. I'm still doing like a similar study plan. So yeah. So I got down an hour and a half of study before I had my breakfast. But I was hoping I would be done earlier than the time I was done. And then while I had breakfast and when I finished, I did another half an hour. So I'm, I'm almost around two hours at the moment so i've got six to go so we haven't finished our like content for the semester yet so i still have lectures and tutorials and stuff like that so when i study i do it all handwritten but i'm not just studying today so even though it's like an eight hour study day i'm going to be doing studying for our final exams as well as some other stuff like watching tutorials and stuff like that so i will be doing both of that but i'll share with you guys the studying tips i have when i study i've been asked a lot about what my degree is what i study so i do exercise and sports science at sydney uni it's um really hard <laughs> right now i have biochemistry and i found anatomy pretty hard last year when i did anatomy i've been asked a lot about how to study for anatomy drawing like writing and drawing as much as you can the degree i'm doing has lots of pathways that you can go into and please don't ask me what I want to do because I I don't know. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, low key like high key stressing out, but also like YOLO. But yeah, from this degree, you can go into biomechanics. You can be you can be like a, a sports scientist. Most people go into physiotherapy and like rehab and like working with patients. Um, a lot of people go into medical things like that. Like it's all health and science. There's like honestly, I don't even know what jobs you can do from it. There's like corporate stuff, like being like health. I don't know like honestly I don't know but I know like I mean it is a health science degree there's lots of health pathways like um, one of my good friends wants to do medicine after this um, a lot of people do oh actually she transferred to physio but like yeah I don't know and then I was considering doing a master's after because I because I don't know what I want to do so like in the, I don't know like nutrition and dietetics or maybe PE teaching or something like that but I really don't want to do a master's anymore I just I hate studying I don't want to do this I'm running behind schedule, so I really don't have time to talk to the camera, which I love doing, so. <laughs> I just realized before I didn't include what I like about my degree. I literally just said it was hard. Even though I find it stressful, some of the subjects I'm not a fan of, but for the most part, I do enjoy what we learn. My favorite subjects have been like biomedical science, muscle mechanics, 
Um, I do like biochemistry, even though it's like ridiculous. Um, I didn't like anatomy. When we did anatomy, we had to work with cadavers and just Google that if you don't know what that is. Um, it's just dead bodies. I hate biomechanics. I like neuroscience. So I like learning about the body and about nutrition science and health science and neuroscience and just physiology. I find that really interesting and also important. I enjoy learning about how our bodies work and the science behind it. And there are some interesting experiments that we um, research. And, and yeah, so there are some subjects that I'm not a fan of, but for the most part, I do find it interesting and I like most of our subjects. So I wanted to share a bunch of study techniques that I think are effective and will help you truly learn things and just be well prepared for exams. So the first thing is you have to handwrite. It takes longer, but that's the point. You actually absorb more when you do it because you're taking your time with it and you're using muscle memory. So you're going to remember stuff that you've written out yourself more than if you've just read it or typed it. But Again, everyone learns differently. I just stand by handwriting. Another tip I have is using different colors. So this not only helps make your page more aesthetic and nice to look at, that is literally what aesthetic means, but just more organized, making your notes more, you know, meaningful and laid out better than if it was just a plain black and white or blue and white page. But the act of changing colors forces you to really be thinking and taking your time with what you're learning and just absorbing it more basically. Another essential tip I have is drawing. So drawing diagrams, drawing pictures, labeling it and using different colors to do this because that way you're actually really connected with what you're learning. And if you just like, you're just gonna remember it so much better because the amount of times I've been in exams and I have to picture my notes and the diagram that I've drawn and I just know something well because I've drawn it myself and 100% drawing is amazing. Okay, so another tip I have and something that I've been doing is after I've written out all my notes, I will read over them and type main points. Um, and this is important because if you have a lot of content to do, by the time you get to the end of all of your content, you've kind of, you know, not forgotten, but you've forgotten the, what you've started with. But what I do is type questions. So I'll read my notes and make up my own questions and type up the questions and answers and then each night I'll get my dad to read out the questions to me and I'll have to answer them. So this is so important for you to keep revisiting your notes. And honestly, if you do this every single night at dinner, for example, you're going to be, you know, you're going to have it in your long-term memory because you would have revisited it so often. So I print that off and just revisit it almost every night. Okay, so my next big, big tip is make it meaningful. And to do this, often you have to make it really weird and just relatable just something that you're going to not forget because it's so whack so i'm just going to show you a bunch of random examples so this one for example here um, when i was highlighting that arms have a higher percent of fast twitch fibers i related that to the athlete allison felix because she's fast so i said a for arms a for allison felix so when we're early into learning about the central nervous system to remember that gray matter is for sorting info and it contains nuclei i drew a little gray nuclei with a sorting hat um that is really random and i was just trying to find examples so i was just flicking through my notes that i'd recently written out to try and find some examples and a really big example and tip I have is acronyms. I make up so many acronyms to remember things. So I'm just showing you an example here. To remember the flow of cerebrospinal fluid through the brain, I made up the acronym LIT MF as ASH. So like LIT motherfucker as ASH. Yes, I'm aware this is so weird. I'm literally sitting here editing this being like, why am I such a weirdo? But I remembered it and it was it helped me remember it. So basically each letter stands for, in this case, stands for where the cerebrospinal fluid next flows to. But I use this for so many things.
another thing I just want to add is I got a to-do list book. So rather than having like lists that just go everywhere, especially when you carry it over from the next day, I just got an exercise book and I've been loving using that. And it's also really satisfying to cross off when you complete a task. Another tip I have is testing yourself. So writing flashcards and having the answer in the back. In all honesty, I don't do this one that often because I do prefer to just type it out and have someone else test me, but this can also work and some people do find this quite effective. It's now 1.30. I'm at four hours and two minutes, almost three minutes. Feeling really behind because I'm only halfway if I want to get eight hours done. And I have training this Arvo, which goes for a while. So I'm thinking it's going to be a late one, but we're literally only doing that for this video because if I <laughs> if I didn't reach, you know, eight hours by like 10, I wouldn't just keep going normally. I'd just be like, whatever. But I wanted to title this vlog eight hours study day. So <laughs> I'm a woman who sticks by her words. I'm getting really tired. Wow. That's because I actually studied till late yesterday too. Wow. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna make some lunch now, do my chin-ups as well, and um, then get back to studying for a little bit longer before I leave for training. Usually I wouldn't have to leave for training until like five, so that's not for like a long time. Because of all the lockdown laws and stuff still happening, the lights don't really come on in a lot of places, so I'm meeting my training partners earlier, so because, oh, because it's like winter now, so almost, so it gets dark at like five. Okay, another tip I have is to productively procrastinate. So this one's for those people who struggle with getting started and are just serial procrastinators. That is just to do it productively, like pick something else that's on your list that you need to do. Or something that I used to always do is study the easy stuff or the stuff that I enjoyed but still had to be done. Or even just take online quizzes. So for example, if you do the HSC, you can do all the past paper, multiple choice questions as an online quiz. Okay, so I'm on my way to training. I'm so excited to train, but I am very tired. I did not get enough sleep last night. So I left at 3.30 because we're starting at four tonight because of the lighting. And when I left, my watch was at five hours and 15 minutes for my study timer. So I'm gonna have to do a lot when I get home. So if I wanna reach eight hours of studying today, I have to study for another two, and, two hours and 45 minutes which I usually would do after dinner when I have dinner early. But I'm not finished all my training till like seven-ish because after our running session, we have our online Zoom hit session with our coach. Um, so, cause I usually have dinner around eight and then I'll study for like after then. So I might be studying till like late at night. Again, that's why I'm really tired. But I haven't actually watched many like study with me videos on YouTube where it goes for the entire day, but I'm sure there are some cause I looked it up. And I saw some people doing like, you know, like 15 hour study day. And I was just like, yeah. So my exams are still like three weeks away. So a ridiculously long study day would just not be maintainable because even the amount of hours I'm doing today, I won't really have any other time in the day to do anything outside of like studying and training. 
And that's why I went to bed so late last night because I was editing at like 11 to 12, which is ridiculous. I'm not someone who like promotes not getting enough sleep. Going to sleep early is good. I should do that. Honestly, it's about quality, not quantity. It's better to get like three or four hours of solid work where you've really learned stuff. It's better to do less work and get more out of it. And honestly, having breaks is important. So, so like having a break to go and do exercise or to train or even just to do something that you love is good for the soul. But also it's better for your study so you can be more fresh when you return back to it. And it helps you mentally get through it and break up the day. And I've said this before in videos, but my coach has always said to me, like for the last five years since we were like in like younger teenagers, you can be like really good at two things, but as soon as you add a third or as soon as you have more than two things, you can't be like amazing at them you can be good at them still but you can't be like really good at them so that's that was like my philosophy in hsc like i was focusing on athletics and schoolwork and that were my two things i didn't really have time for factoring in socializing or anything out of that um which is bad obviously but i was like whatever it's um one year obviously that's different with uni or anything else because then it becomes like more than one year but it's more like you could just say whatever it's a month or like six weeks of like solid work but yeah make time for what you love and train <laughs> anyway um i need to go train <laughs> She goes flying around the bend as she goes past her twin in the same coloured pants. She's going away. She's By really the way, Vampire she's Diaries is not way. really hot. She relaxes into the back straight. She's getting her stride really on right now. Jacinta would be very pleased with this. Striding out she goes as she comes into the She pushes into the, the bend. Back straight. Working that right arm, picking the feet what? over tall grass. <laughs> Come on, work those arms, Emmy. You can Don't tell get she's lazy. She's starting to fatigue now. The turnover slightly decreased, but she's still maintaining a beautiful form. She reaches the end of the rep, giving it her everything. I'm gonna finish this off. And that is absolutely insane rep. Vampire <laughs> Diaries isn't hot, you suck, Emmy. Okay, it's too dark. The light has gone now, so this looks terrible. But we just finished our training session, and now I have 30 minutes till our hit. It's actually a strength the Zoom tonight, and then I'll try and stay up as late as I can to get these eight hours of study done. <sighs> uh, also, for my, um, I don't want to say OG subscribers because I'm not like a famous YouTuber, <laughs> but um, if you know, you know. I got so warm. It's a weirdly warm today for like almost being winter, and I was just like, <laughs> needed to be in a crop top and shorts because like that's what I would be comfy in, and I was just really like self-conscious about doing that but then i was just like fuck it yolo who cares about what someone's thinking about me like yolo so yeah we yoloed <laughs> almost seven and I just finished our zoom class sometimes at dinner the questions that I typed up from my notes I get dad to read out to me and I try to answer them so I'm just gonna do it for a little bit now what cranial nerve innervates winking and cranial. eye closing cranial nerve seven very good 
List the pathway taken by light through the eye. Size of the pupil and how much light enters the eye? Yep, like an, something starting Like an eye. aperture. Yep. Blind spot is the head of the optic nerve where there are no photoreceptors. Wait, can I have a clue? What are they? What are they? No, what? Change. When the lens changes thickness, this is known as? Accommodation. Very good. It's produced by the ciliary body. Um, it, when it drains from the eye, it flows through the posterior segment of the anterior chamber, through the pupil to the anterior segment of the anterior chamber, um, and then it enters the canal of Schlaum. I don't know how to pronounce it. Something that's like SCH. If the aqueous humor drainage is blocked. If the aqueous humor drainage is blocked, um, the pressure builds up in the eye and it can lead to pressure building up in the posterior segment which can lead to a cupping at the back of the eye when it pushes as the fluid pushes against it and that can lead to glaucoma also known as tunnel vision oh. Oh, can I have a clue? What's it start with? Major station in Sydney Oh this is interesting Central station, central, central artery and vein Yes <laughs> People like reflex, constriction and dilation of the smooth muscles. It's a number. I know all the cranial nerves are numbers. <laughs> um, is it a low? Out of 10, is it a low or high number? Um, not, not, no, that's too much, too much information. <laughs> um, okay, wait, cranial nerve that controls, it's either 3 or 7 or 5. I'm going to go with... One of those is correct. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, 3. Okay, good, you got it. What, where are the tear glands located and what cranial nerve supplies them? The tear glands are located in the lateral supplied by cranial nerve 7. What cranial nerve does touch sensation to the eye? 5. Very good. Two cranial nerves innervate visceral motor eye functions. What are they? 3. Yep. Yeah. And 7. What do lesions to the left optic red radiation cause oh okay i have to visualize my drawing in my head it's the we lose the temporal field of one eye and the nasal field of the other eye can i see and that's called homo Homonigmus homon, homonig, homonig, hemianopsia. Homonigmus hemianopsia. Homonigmus hemianopsia. How am I meant to remember that? Homonigmus hemianopsia? Yeah. It's a protein retinal compound. Ow! Explain the step from photon to axon. Okay, the photon goes through the cornea and then it will go from the photoreceptor. That cell will synapse onto. A bipolar cell which synapses onto a ganglion cell which will have axons that go photoreceptor cells, bipolar cells, ganglion cells, axons from I'm at five hours and fifty-five minutes. And it's almost eight o'clock, so I'm gonna have a dinner break and then do another two hours and five minutes and then I will have hit eight hours. For dinner, my mum had made like a veggie curry dal situation with lentils, sweet potato, and then heaps of veggies and brown rice. And also I had way more than one plate. And also I didn't picture everything that I ate throughout this day. So chill. So after dinner, I just did a bunch of study and I just wanted to add that I'm not listening to any music in my headphones. AirPods, sorry. I basically wore them when I had dinner because I was watching Vampire Diaries. But I just wanted to add this because I have been asked a bit if I think it's productive or effective to study with music and I personally don't. I think it's distracting but you know each to their own. Good morning me. Have a good sleep honey bunch. Love See you. you in the morning. <laughs> and it's just after 10 30. I'm Nah, I'm gone. I'm ready. I'm ready to call it quits. So we've reached eight hours, 7.57. I know a lot of people probably would see this and be like, I can't stand the fact that you're two minutes and 13 seconds off the eight hour mark. 
Um, and like, mm, hate to see me would have been freaking out if I was not hitting that certain many hours, but current me just doesn't care that that two and a two hours and thirty. That two minutes is just not nah, not doing it. I don't care. I'm rounding it up. Um, sorry if that really annoys you, but <laughs> okay. So I'm like done. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. Do you know what's like crazy? This entire day. Every Something that's like just crazy is that Rio like literally was just sleeping on the table next to me the entire day. Rio, are you like bored? All you do is sleep. Like literally like lick yourself and sleep. Nice and satisfying crossing almost everything off the list. If I ever don't get something crossed off the list, I just carry it over to the next day. So I have been planning out tomorrow. But otherwise, otherwise I'm I'm calling it quits. I have to, I need to sleep. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you are enjoying your studying. Like actually, like getting something out of it, not hating life and not doing too much of it. Like today. I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to do an outro, um, but I'm just too tired. I just can't function. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, yeah, thanks. Bye. <laughs> no, like seriously, thank you. Okay, bye. Um, I, I actually can't do an outro because I'm falling asleep. Um, yeah, okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I can't do this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you can like implement some of these things. And um, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, good night.